Hey everybody, this is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today. As we talk about expanded form, we're in the Common Core Standard of Number System, and we're going to be working with polynomials and degrees of polynomials and right triangles eventually. So today we're going to learn about how to factor trinomials and expand the product of two expressions. Okay, so we've looked at binomials in the past, now we're going to look at trinomials. Tri meaning three, so we'll have three terms there. And then we're going to also look at how to expand the product of two expressions. Okay, so expanded form. Something like this, we've got a, a trinomial of x squared minus 2x minus 3. What on earth do we do in order to expand it? All right. So this is the parabola there, if we were going to actually graph it, it would be something like this. And we're going to be looking at graphing here coming up. And with trinomials, what do you do? What can you do with them? How can you break them apart? And what can you know about the trinomial just by breaking it apart and looking at the x-intercepts? Okay, That's what we're going to do today. All right, factoring. We've looked at factoring before, but now we're going to look at a little bit more complicated expressions that we're going to call trinomials. Okay. A trinomial is an expression with three monomials, three terms in it, okay? When you simplify it down, it gets to three terms. Here, term is 2 minus 4x plus 5x squared. Each of those is a term, okay? Now, if we put them in order from the degree saying, you know, remember the degree is the term that has the highest exponent added up together. So the degree here, this one comes first, then this one, and then this one. So the degree here is 2, the degree here is 1, the degree here is 0. We put them in order, and usually it's going to be a times x squared plus b times x plus c. Okay. Here, a represents 1, b represents negative 4, and c represents 2. So this is how I would write it. My trinomial is x squared minus 4x plus 2. Okay. Something like that. Now these aren't the two, these aren't the same equations, okay? So do notice that. A is 1. We don't put a 1 there. We don't need to, okay? But there's 1x squared minus 4x is plus 2. All right, expand this. How on earth do we expand this? Well, this is what we're going to learn. We're going to talk about a specific way to expand, okay? So x minus 2 times x minus 3. Really, if we use the distributive property, we take x minus 3, multiply it by x, and then take x minus 3 and multiply it by 2. So we get x times the quantity of x minus 3 minus 2 times the quantity of x minus 3. So from here, we do the distributive property again. All right, with the distributive property, that x goes into each of those guys, and that 2 goes into each of those guys in there. So it's the distributive property from the beginning, and then it's the distributive property again. All right, so this is what we end up with, x squared minus 3x minus 2x minus negative 6. And we're going to simplify this expression, and we get x squared minus 5x plus 6. You always want to break everything down, add them all together, simplify as much as you can, and we get this. This is our trinomial, where a is 1, b is negative 5, and c is 6. All right, well, I just try doing this one on your own. You got x plus 4 times the quantity of x minus 4. Remember, using the distributive property and then the distributive property again. Need a hint? Well, here's a little bit of a help for you. You're taking this x plus 6 and multiplying it by the x, and then you're taking this x plus 6 and you're multiplying it by the 4. And then you do it again, x times x, and then x times 6, 4 times x, 4 times 6. Combine them all together once you simplify it, and you should get this, x squared plus 2x minus 24. All right. Let's talk about a little bit more with trinomials, and we can really get some information here from the equation and graph it using our line of symmetry and using our vertex, okay? So let's talk about what these are first. You've heard about a line of symmetry in the past. Well, with parabolas, with these trinomials, you will need a line of symmetry in order to draw the parabola pretty accurately, okay? And first of all, what it is, it's just a line that's vertical, usually vertical, and it's an equation that looks something like this. x equals 0, x equals negative 1, or so forth. Now, you remember when we had the a and the b and the c? 
in the equation? Well, this is how you find the line of symmetry. You just put x equals to negative, well, put the b on top, use the fraction bar, and then 2 times a. And that's what it is. That's your line of symmetry. That's where it's going to go. It's going to be at that particular point. So if it was 0, you would draw a vertical line at x equals 0, and that's where the parabola is symmetrical around. So here's an example. Here's the y-axis. It's the line of symmetry here, or x equals 0. So notice, bam, this is what cuts that parabola in half. If I were to take it and fold it along the y-axis, bam, it'd be the same exact thing. That's what you're going to do. Okay, and the other thing we're going to talk about is the vertex, which is the very lowest or highest point of the parabola, depending on the shape. Now, once you know the line of symmetry, you plug it in, you plug that x value in, and that is where the vertex is with that x value. Does that make sense? So for this one, for example, that circle represents the vertex. If we were to take the equation, plug in 0 for x, it would spit out that y value, and it would give us 2. So our vertex is at 0, 2. And from there, that gives us a little bit more information to graph our parabola. All right, so let's do that. Let's find the line of symmetry here. Notice this is an expanded form. So we need to actually do the distributive property and then find, the using the trinomial with the A and the B, what is the line of symmetry, okay? So let's do that. Right, what are the x-intercepts? This is the other option, too. From here, notice what we're looking at in the past is that if the x-intercept y equals 0, either this guy has to equal 0 or this guy has to equal 0. Okay. So if this equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, well, bring that over, x equals 3. If this equals 0, x plus 1, bring that over, x equals negative 1. So our x-intercepts now are 3 and negative 1. We can get our line of symmetry. We can talk about it on a graph. Now, if you think about it, with those x-intercepts, what's halfway in between negative 1 and 3? Well, there's four points there. That would mean that our line of symmetry is right there on x equals negative 1, halfway in between negative 1 and 3. Puts the line of symmetry right there. We know the vertex. If we plug in 0, Bam, we get the vertex down there, you get the x-intercept, x-intercept, and then we can actually curve and draw our parabola now with all these pieces of information, okay? Here it is. All right. So the line of symmetry here is x equals 1. If you did the equation of negative b over 2a, should have got the same thing. You would have had to expand this first, though. You'd have had to do the distributive property and then the distributive property again. All right, why don't you do this one on your own? If you want to try doing the distributive property and then the distributive property again, do it. Or you can find the x-intercepts, which I think might be a little bit easier for you at this point, and then what's halfway in between it. Well, we know that our x-intercepts, if you're having trouble, is this is one of them and this is the other one. So if this equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0, x would be negative 6. Here, if x minus 2 equals 0, our x-intercept would be then 2. Put those on the graph. What's halfway in between? That's where your line of symmetry is. Okay. All right, we're going to find the vertex now. With this equation, we've got x minus 3 times the quantity of x plus 1. Remember. At the vertex, it's going to be halfway in between the x-intercepts. If you don't want to do that, though, and you want to find the line of symmetry first, you plug that in, and that will give you the y value, okay? All right, let's find the vertex. You start off here. The line of symmetry, first of all, is what you have to find, okay? That negative b over 2a, so it gives us x equals 1. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to plug that 1 back in for the x value and then find out what that equals. So x equals 1, 1 minus 3 times the quantity of 1 plus 1, we get that 2 times negative 2 equals negative 4. So our point, our vertex point, is at 1, because we got the 1 up there from the line of symmetry, and negative 4. We took the line of symmetry, plugged it back in for x, and bam, that's our vertex point, okay? So we're putting all these pieces together for the puzzle to draw our trinomial.
Why don't you try and find the vertex of this guy? x plus 6 times the quantity of x minus 2. Remember, find the line of symmetry first, and then from the line of symmetry, you plug it back in, and that gives you the vertex. All right. Well, you know what? The 20th president of the U.S., James Garfield, developed a proof for the Pythagorean theorem. See if you can figure out how he did it below. Okay. First, he put two congruent triangles next to each other. And then he made a trapezoid. Think about what's the area of that trapezoid? What's the area of the trapezoid? If this is one of the bases and this is the other base, and the height is a plus b, what's the area of that in terms of a and b? Okay, and then we think about it here, well, the area of this guy is one half a b, right? That's the triangle a times b divided by two, here a divided by a times b divided by two, and then this area of the triangle is one half c squared, right? So if you think about the area of the trapezoid, you put them all together, and you compare that with the sum of the area of the trapezoid, that gives you your equation. You add this, 1 half AB plus 1 half AB plus 1 half C squared equals the area of the trapezoid, which was A plus B times the quantity of A plus B, and then multiply by a half. If you notice, you put them all together, they will equal each other. Pretty cool, huh? Didn't I bet you didn't know your presidents were that smart in math. It's pretty cool. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, learning how to factor trinomials and expand them and finding the vertex and the line of symmetry and all that. You guys did a lot today, huh? Well, I hope you uh, learned a lot about expanded form and then working with trinomials and new graph and parabolas. This was Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us as uh, we learned about expanded form. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems and on Twitter at Matt's Math. And enjoy math.